Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20 and welcome to episode 9 of Direwolf20's Let's Play Season 3. Time to get built in this sorting room. Now, I've already got the foundations of it. I've got a filter here that's empty. And I've got a sorting machine here that has plenty of juice in it. And then I've got an empty chest here. And what's going to happen is the filter is going to pull stacks at a time out of the empty chest and send them into the sorting machine. And then the sorting machine is what I need to get working next. I also need to grab, I know I have some of those solar panels. I probably want to craft a few more of them. Uh, so don't mind me. I'll probably get started crafting those off camera. I want to have a good handful of solar panels. I'm not sure if I'm going to build another one of those little water mill systems. I might, just because they're so darn cool and uh, provide a nice amount of power. We'll just see how I'm doing. But for now, this thing looks pretty good. And what I could do if I really wanted to is just run this sort, of, uh, this sort of thing over into my next room. That might work out pretty well. All right, so let's maybe center my macerator and my induction furnaces right in this room here. And as you can see, my inventory is rather full at the moment, but hopefully I'll start getting rid of all this junk. So I'm going to have my macerator sitting here. And my macerator should probably sit right there. So what do we got? One, two, three, four blocks and one two three four blocks that looks like a nice spot for it yeah so nice and centered in the room and we're going to want some pneumatic tubes to come into this macerator on the top because items have to go in your machines on the top in order to land in the top slot and items will get pulled out from this output slot by pulling out from the front or any side of the machine and if you wanted items to go into the bottom of your machines you have to pipe them or tube them into the bottom so for now we've got a nice little way to get our stuff where we want it. And um, I'm probably going to want to run this a little bit under the flooring here. So why don't I run over and grab from my equivalent exchange chest my diamond handsaw. And I'm going to combine the diamond handsaw with some stone slabs. And that'll get them broken down to stone covers. And the stone covers can be used for two things. One, they look really nice if you want to use them to cover up some wiring. Uh, they do a nice job of covering up redstone or blue trick wiring. But the other thing you can do is place it on the side of a machine like I just did there. And then run your pneumatic tubes down like that. And now the pneumatic tubes will not connect to the machine. If you didn't have your stone slab there, see how it's connected to the side of the machine? Not exactly what we want. So place your stone slab, or any kind of slab for that matter, and it'll prevent the pneumatic tubes or red power wiring or blue power wiring or anything like that. All kinds of wires and tubes will uh, not be allowed to move. And uh, now we'll just kind of dig down here and run our system out like that. So that's where our input is going to come up for our macerators. And maybe I don't want this out the front like this. Do I want to maybe consider placing this in the back? That might be a nice idea. Let's maybe think about moving that. Yeah, maybe I want this guy to come up the back, maybe. Maybe, maybe. We'll see. Uh, for now, let's just clear out this flooring a little bit. I'll put the cover like this. Remember to hold shift or your sneak button, whatever your sneak button happens to be, in order to do stuff like that. And that might be looking pretty good. All right. So that might be a good way to set that up. Now let's think about exactly how we want to sort our items. We're going to want to make sure that anything that needs to be cooked, that's pretty much copper ore or any kind of ores, need to get macerated and then cooked in our induction furnaces. So that's going to have to go down a certain pathway in our tubing system. And the way we use this sorting machine to sort things is with these paint cans that I made last episode. Okay. So let's get ready to start using these paint cans. And I'm going to head over to my equivalent exchange area. I need to sort out my inventory a little bit. So let's get this stuff in there. I might want to uh, get some more dyes going on here. That would probably be a good idea. All right, let's see what kind of interesting dyes we can come up with here. If I combine red and blue, I get a purple dye. Okay. Can I combine blue and yellow? No. How about blue and green? Hey, there we go. Cyan. That's good. Um, probably going to want to get orange, so I'm going to need a couple more flowers real quick. And I should probably teach my transmutation table all these neat little dyes, but eh, we'll get there. So let's do that and that. There we go. So I wanted orange dye, right? Yep, that'll look good. What other kind of dyes are there? I don't even know all the dyes off the top of my head. Oh yeah, we need some white. That'll come from bone meal. That's going to be good. And uh, I should probably get some black dye as well, which I can go find some squids outside at some point. I don't think I've gone and killed squids in this season at all, have I? Nope, not at all. 
So let's go ahead and get ourselves some white dye. That'll be cool. Maybe even some light blue. Yeah, that'll be good. All right, I've got more than enough dye on me now. Let me clean up my inventory and I'll be back. All right, you guys remember this little system that I used from last episode? Let's get ourselves some white paint, some light blue paint, some orange paint. Looks like we're going to have room for two more, so I made just enough cyan and uh, purple. And I won't get around to making that lime dye just yet, but maybe in the future I'll need it. But I want to make sure I had a good amount of paint. So let's put this stuff in our miscellaneous junk. Don't need that anymore. Next one I'm going to need to do is make myself using equivalent exchange stuff now. Yeah, well, no, it's gonna be in there eventually, but right now I need to get from my miscellaneous junk, I was already in the right chest, my wool. And let's go make sure our transmutation table knows about wool. Granted, there's about a billion sheep around me and I have all the wool I would ever need, but it might just be a nice thing to know. Thank you very much. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is go grab my crafting table right there and let's get ourselves, how many paint cans do I have? Eight? Well, then I'm going to need eight pieces of wood. And a piece of wood plus wool equals a paintbrush. Perfect. And now let's go head over to our chest and get ready to store this stuff because I don't have enough inventory for this, right? But uh, my equivalent exchange guy. So let's combine orange paint with a paintbrush and we get orange paintbrush. Makes sense. And a purple paintbrush. And white. And see, I'm already running out of inventory space here. So I'll put the uh, paintbrushes that I've already used into my chest. There we go. And then do this again. Get some light blue, cyan, green, yellow, and blue. Perfect. So now I've got all these paintbrushes, and the way we use paintbrushes is we paint the pneumatic tubes and items of the same color are only allowed to go into a unpainted tube, in other words a tube that doesn't have any paint on it, or paint of the same color. So that means an item that's colored as blue cannot go down a green path, but it can go down an unpainted path or a blue path. You'll see how that works in just a moment. So let's see what we've got here. I'm gonna just run this guy right straight downwards. And I'm also going to run them over here a little bit. Well, no, maybe not over there. Let's just run them straight down. And I'm going to run this tubing like so. Okay. Now you might be saying, Direwolf, this is an awfully ugly floor that you've got. But don't worry, I've got some marble bricks and I've got a diamond handsaw. And you guys saw me make some uh, covers a little bit ago. Remember I said covers can be used to cover up all the uh, ugly stuff you've got going on? Well, if I placed a cover right here on the floorboards, look at that. You can't even tell that I've got covers there. And once I've completely covered up this floorboard, it's going to look really nice. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and uh, leave that as is. So that's how covers work. Remember, I used them again over here as a stone cover, but you can get a lot of different types of covers. So basically, what we want to do, let's pick a color for this item. I'm going to go with green, the one that happens to be right here. And I'm going to paint this here as green. And that means that only items that are colored green are allowed to go through this pipe. And this pipe is what leads to both my macerators. 
and red power pneumatic tubes function in such a way that it'll try and go into the first inventory available. So anything coming through here will try and go into this macerator. And if there's no room, it's gonna try and go into this macerator. And if there's no room here, it's gonna go back here and try and go into this because of the green piping. So that's gonna be an interesting little experiment. You guys will see how that works in a little bit. But meanwhile, let's maybe get ready with our induction furnaces because once we've macerated stuff, we need to have an induction furnace here ready to go. Cool. Now, how am I gonna have such close quarters with these machines? Well, remember, I had my stone covers. Don't forget about those guys, they're very important. And uh, I'll be back in a few minutes once I've uh, gotten everything I want out of this thing. All right, so the next thing I wanna build is a retriever, and that's what's gonna get the items out of my macerator and into my um, induction furnaces. In order to build that retriever, I needed those ender pearls that I just collected. And I also need a blue alloy ingot. As you can see, I've got that guy ready. And first I need to build a filter, which is gonna require, oh, I need two more gold bars. I almost forgot about those. Well, maybe not almost, I did forget about those. All right, let's try that again. All right, filter, hooray. I did make my red doped wafer ahead of time and my piston, and I've got my gold ingots now and my cobblestone, which is cool. Filter, ready to go with that guy. Now, I'm gonna need to place that filter in here and upgrade him, pretty much like so. I need, uh, what is this stuff? Brass, huh? All right, I need two brass ingots. I'll be right back, crafting table, with two brass ingots. All right, hopefully I've got everything I need now. I'm gonna do this, this, this. My two ender pearls, and oh man, I even forgot iron. How could I? One last time. Direwolf always forgets something and sometimes forgets many things. Filter, there's my iron, and there's my blue owl ingot. Now I've got a retriever, perfect. Exactly what I wanted to see. And the retriever is gonna be set up to pull items out of my macerators. And how am I gonna do that? Well, I'm simply gonna place some pneumatic tubes right here and put them like that. But oh no, we're too close. But you guys should know already, we can resolve that simply by placing covers like so. There we go, nice. And then I can place my retriever right here. And I need my screwdriver, which of course I don't have on me. Let's go get that out of my chest. And rearrange this guy like so. There we go. Looking good. And you know what, I think I'm gonna change a little bit from my standard design here and do things a little differently than I normally do. Um, I'm going to try a slightly different design for my sorting system. I haven't tested this yet before. Don't have any idea how well it's going to work. I just kind of thought about it in my head. Let's go with lossless wrench mode. Want to make sure not to lose these induction furnaces because that would be pretty unfortunate. And uh, I'm going to place down my pneumatic tubes right here. And place my retriever right there. Where's my retriever at? There it is. Cool and get my screwdriver ready to take care of it. There we are. Then the output can come right back around like this. And you'll notice that the retriever does have some power requirements. So I'm gonna have to run some of that blue trick wiring uh, that's powering right now my sorting machine is also gonna have to power this retriever. But I'll take care of that in a little bit. Um, but what if I were to place my induction furnaces right here? there and there, right? And then what I could do is run my pneumatic tubing up the back of this thing, and right like so. And I think that's a little bit more elegant, isn't it? I think so. Why not? Sure. Um, now, what I might also want to do, hmm, let's grab our orange paint here. Why not? and I'll paint this guy orange, so that only items with an orange marker are allowed to come up and head into the induction furnace. Now, you might note that saying, hey, if the retriever's pulling stuff out of my macerators, it needs to paint them orange, right? 
You got it. Correct mundo. So let's change this here to orange. Now, this thing will pull them out and connect it like so. And then my other option is to run some pneumatic tubing right here. So what's going to happen is, as things come out of the crafting system, the sorting system there, it's going to come right along, and if it's painted green, it's going to go into the macerators. If it's painted orange, it's going to continue right along the tubing there and hit the induction furnaces. However, if it gets macerated, it'll get pulled out by my retriever, painted orange, and sent into the induction furnaces anyway. Perfect. And now let's go ahead and craft ourselves up another one of those retrievers. We're going to need another one of those to pull items out of our induction furnaces. So I've got the piston, I've got the red doped wafer, kind of prepared for this this time, for a change. And I've got my filter. Now let's sneak over here and grab a blue alloy ingot, which I'm going to need, some of those. And uh, I did have a piece of leather standing by. And what can I use this recipe for? That's right, the retriever. I need this guy up here. Did I have everything in here? Nope, I forgot the iron again. There we go. Let's try that again. All right, this guy goes here. Ta-da, another retriever. Wasn't too exciting, honestly. But uh, I'm also making myself some more blue alloy ingots because I want to make sure I have enough ingredients. I'll grab my... Uh, Got here. Here's my, uh, there we go, wool. Oh boy, I'm only gonna have one piece of wool left. Pretty sure I taught it to my transmutation table. There we go, more blue alloy wires. And as you can see, there's a pretty serious thunderstorm going on outside. Neat. Um, so now I'm gonna have to run some uh, pneumatic tubing out the front of these guys here, but we're intersecting here. Uh, we don't want these tubes here to be butting up against each other. So for now, I'm just going to place right in between them, like so. And that's going to prevent those tubes from getting uh, any problems. And then we'll have another one right down here. And I know they're a little bit off center. That's all right. We'll fix them a little bit. Hey, that looks nice. And we'll get our pneumatic tubes going right down there like that. And this is where my next retriever is going to wind up being. Um, probably just have him like so and get our screwdriver here to adjust it. Hey, that doesn't look half bad, actually. I like it. And that'll go towards my sorting chests in the back of the room there. So we'll figure out exactly how that wants to happen in a little bit. All right, guys, so now that I've got those machines set up, I'm gonna need to power them. Um, and I did have the idea earlier of running the uh, power line over from my water mill system. So why don't I get another one of those nifty little machines, the MFE. So I've got some goodies over here ready to go. Um, thought I had more refined iron. Maybe I left it in my... Did I already use all that refined iron that I cooked up? I guess I did. Either that or I left it in a chest. Let's check my ingots. Yeah, I've got a little bit. All right, well, I've got enough. That's good for me. Let's grab, I'm gonna need four. Yeah, no, I grabbed one too many of these guys. So machine block. Man, it's tough building stuff by hand once you get used to not having to do that anymore. There we go, MFE, perfect. And I'm gonna need some tin cabling and probably gonna need another LV transformer because I am using um, those macerators which need low voltage current. Now you guys might be saying, why don't you use the upgrade for the uh, high voltage, right? Because there is an upgrade available that allows you, it's called the transformer upgrade. But look how expensive that is and compare that to the price of a low voltage transformer. And you might say to yourself, oh yeah, Direwolf, good idea. Don't bother spending the upgrade money. Um, so I'm gonna need, I think, one copper cable. Is that the right cost? So copper. Oh, I was close. What's the LV transformer? Oh, copper on the top and bottom. I was awfully close, wasn't I? There we go, LV transformer. So that'll be ready for my MFE. I'm gonna need some cabling now, and I should probably, let's see, where should I have this guy running from and to? Um, this guy's gonna be transferring medium voltage current. 
Let me think about exactly how I want to run the cabling on this stuff. All right, let's go for broke. I'm going to go with fiber optic cabling. I don't want to have to worry about um, power loss on this guy. So fiber optic cable, a new power transfer cable, requires two, well, one diamond each, and you're going to get six of these guys if you use silver ingots on the sides. If you don't have red power installed, you can use redstone, but you get a little less of the glass fiber. So hopefully six of those should be enough. And let's see, how am I for tin cabling? Uh, industrial craft goodies. I've got ten of them, and I've got, well, let's make sure I have some tin on me. There we go. Just make a little bit more of this low current cable stuff. All right, let's go outside and figure out exactly how we want to run this stuff. Uh, we're probably going to want to run this outside under here. And let's not forget our most important item is the low voltage cabling here. And I've also thought this through, and I think I can compact this system even a little bit more than I already have. If I were to knock this stuff off here, like so, can I run this thing right underground here? So let's do this, right? Check this out. I came up with this just a few minutes ago as I was thinking it through. If I place this here and then place down my retriever like so, and then where's my screwdriver? Let's rearrange this a little bit. There we go. Nice. So that is just a little bit more compact, and uh, that was the wrong thing to click on. There we go. I can set this guy to orange again, and then run this pneumatic tubing like so. So if you check that out, it's a little bit more compact. Look at that. I think that even looks a little bit better. And now I can use this marble brick to cover up the flooring and make things look nice again. Purdy, isn't it? I think that looks nice. And everything else is kind of hidden behind, and I'll be able to use the uh, covers and make this look really sharp in a little bit. So let me think exactly how I want to uh, run my powering, and I'll be back in a moment. That retriever might be a problem there. Yeah, as a matter of fact, it just might be. I might need to move him a little bit. So let's do something like this. This way, I have room to run my uh, cabling, but eh, let me think through a minute. I think my best bet here would be to run my cabling first, like so. Just so I'm ready with it. And then I can figure out exactly how my pneumatic tubes should go. So let's see about that. All right, let's adjust this just a little bit. I'm going to run this guy down here. And hopefully this will work out pretty well. And then I can place this like so. And remember, items coming out of here should be orange. And I can cover this flooring back up a little bit, make it look a little nice again. And don't worry, I've got some covers for that flooring too. And then if we run this pneumatic tubing like this, I should be able to do something like that. And now everything should run smoothly. So what should basically happen is items with a green indication will go up here and into this line. This guy cannot receive items in the back, so nothing would ever go down this way. And items would come across this way if they have an orange indication, an orange color. And uh, this thing would pull out orange, so it would come up here and then go over to orange because this guy's sending items out as orange. So that should work pretty smoothly. And then I can have my cabling as such. Put this guy here. Let's not forget our LV transformer. Remember how I said that's pretty important. There we go. So that's a low voltage current now. And then uh, let's get some kind of uh, MFE here. So if I were to put this guy, some cabling like this, and the glass fiber cable, by the way, I think can go 20 blocks without losing any energy units. So that's pretty good. We can be pretty happy about that. And I want this thing to be on this side of the EU detector thing. And this way the water mill will run regardless of whether one, both, or the other 
need some power. So let's just run this thing around along the ground here. I think I've got enough cabling. If not, I'll figure it out. There we go. And now I should just need an MFE. Where's that guy at? So the MFE would get turned from medium to low voltage and then sent into my machines. I'm just double checking. It would be a pretty big shame if my machines exploded because I missed something silly. There we go. And now I need my electric wrench. And I think I can shift click this. Is that what I want to do? There we go. Now the output face is down and my machines should be getting some electricity at the moment. Let's check them out. Oh yeah, look at that. Energy flowing into my macerators and uh, my induction furnaces are starting to get some energy as well. That's good. And my MFE is getting all the power it can from those water mills, which are now running, by the way. Water mills cooking up, doing their thing. Let's get a bit more of that cabling. I'm going to need a little bit more from here. I'm going to make my Philosopher's Stone into a crafting table once more. Love having a portable crafting table. Kind of like the top of the list of things I love about Equivalent Exchange. Incidentally, a very long list. Portable crafting, near the top. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot. Let's sleep through the night because it's getting dark out. And we need to do some solar powers, so dark and solar don't mix. Much better. Gonna run over here, grab the solar panels that I temporarily stored in this chest. Remember, I want to have about seven of them upstairs. I might bump this up to eight, nine, ten, something like that. We'll see. But at least for now, I can run this cabling just straight up here like this. Uh, let's see. There we go. And hopefully, my one of my favorite mods, Advanced Machines, will be available soon, and I can start replacing these solar panels with uh, advanced solar panels. Uh, you can basically get a bunch of different versions of solar power, and it costs the same number of solar panels. Basically, you'll be able to combine eight solar panels into one block and get as much energy as eight solar panels would have otherwise created for you. So there we go. Let's just check out how this thing's running. Um, my MFE should be starting to build up a good amount of power. My induction furnaces both have a significant amount of internal capacity, and the macerators should be pretty close to full capacity on the inside as well. Um, I might want to build an uh, upgrade or two to the internal storage of the macerator. I'm guessing the fact that this isn't filling so much is because it doesn't have enough energy for one full cycle, and it's calculating the fact that it needs more energy than it has for a single cycle as a result of the overclockers. I'm guessing that's what's happening. But for now, I can seal this wall back up, and everything looks sharp. All right. And I think I've decided that just for purely aesthetic purposes, I should maybe consider having all these chests along that wall. Just think that would look a little bit better because of the size of this room. I didn't think I'd be able to get the system to be as compact as it currently is. And uh, this room is pretty much bigger than I need it to be at the moment. So I should probably move those at some point. And I might do that before I really finish any more piping. Why don't I consider that as a possibility? Um, I think I'll do that off camera. So basically off camera, going to be uh, moving these chests from one wall to the next. All right, I think that looks a little bit nicer. Yeah, that's a nicer looking room, don't you think, guys? Totally. So I've got in order of uh, pretty much value. I went with iron ingots and bars and ores. Pretty much all your ores and stuff are going to go in there, followed by your miscellaneous valuables, the diamonds, the copper, or the diamonds, the coal, the redstone, that kind of good stuff. Then you'll have your industrial craft and forestry and build craft items and red power items here. So these are basically your mod item chests, followed by less important stuff like cobblestone, all cobblestone will go into this chest here with dirt, sand, gravel, and sandstone going there. Miscellaneous junk can land in here. This will basically be things that we don't know what to do with. All right. Looking good to me. Uh, yeah, not bad at all, actually. So I guess our next step should be to start running some uh, tubing over to these chests. So let's get started on that. And another important step that I'm missing here is applying some redstone power to this induction furnace. I'm going to put the lever on the back here, right like so. And if I am correct about this, the redstone power will transfer from one block to the next like normal red power does, right? So redstone energy goes from one block to the next. So these both induction furnaces should be powered up by this one lever. 
and they're going to both start building up the charge that they need. And let's see, how is this guy doing? Oh yeah, plenty of power in my MFE. As you can see, that water mill is doing a good job of keeping both MFEs fully charged. Exactly what I wanted to see it doing. Good. There we go. All right, so let's move my retriever, which I just grabbed here, and I should probably grab those pneumatic tubes. Um, what I did was I just put all my junk in my chest right here. This is like a temporary storage area. You guys probably noticed this chest and said, what am I doing? That's what I was doing. Um, I thought I had more pneumatic tubes. Did I run out or did I throw them away somewhere? Probably dropped them in here by mistake. There they are. I'm going to need a few more of these. So let's grab our ingots and bars and whatnot. There we go. I got a crafting table on me. I don't have to run to the next room. Hey, there we go. Plenty. All right, so let's start doing some stuff with this guy. Um, I'll do this underground here, and I'll probably just knock this marble flooring off for the moment. I'm just going to clear out all along underneath these chests. And that's going to make it nice and easy on me getting the items that I need into those chests. So what I want to do here, basically, is run my pneumatic tubing straight down and run it along all the way down here along this guy to here. Right? So there's a pretty efficient pneumatic tubing system. And then I should also go over here and run some pneumatic tubing right under the flooring right here. So what do we got? What kind of situation we got in this area? Not too bad. Probably just use a cover here to block this guy from interfering. So let's run our pneumatic tubes like this. All right, so we don't want that connection there, so we're going to use a cover. Nice. Well, maybe I'm being a little bit too close to everything. Let's just run this guy like so, right under here. That way we don't have to worry about covers and all that good stuff. I mean, either way, whatever you want to do is fine, but... This is probably the best way to run it. There we go. Nice. So what will happen is items will either go when they come down this tubing here. If they're tagged with green, they're going to go up this way. But right now, because I don't have any color tags at all on this thing, um, they could go down this path. But they probably wouldn't because they're going to head to the shortest distance to an inventory. And that should probably be here. But either way, we're about to put some color tagging on all those chests that I have. And that'll have this sorter machine doing things a little bit differently. So for now, I think it's time we start doing that. What do you say, guys? All right. So we should have right here our retriever. There we go. And the retriever is going to pull items out. So anything that gets cooked by the induction furnaces will get pulled out and needs to be color-coded with something. And the color codes that we should use here will determine what chest the items go into. So what color do we want to use on this chest? Let's go with, I don't know, we've already used green and orange, right? We don't want to replicate or, change, or, or use multiple colors. Let's just go with blue for the heck of it. So I'll put a pneumatic tube here, and we're going to want tubes pretty much all along this line. Notice how they're all connected right now. Well, if I label this guy blue, that's great. Anything with a blue color is going to go land in this chest, and that should be all cooked ores, so we're going to make this guy colored blue. And that's kind of a darkish blue. There we go. And the next chest is these pretty things, these diamonds and coal and redstone. Let's make that lighter blue. Now watch what happens to the pipes when they have two different colors. Aha, they're no longer connecting. Pipes with different colors will not connect, but a pipe that's colored will connect to a pipe that's not colored. So there you go. And uh, we've now indicated that light blue ores can go into this chest. So that'll basically be your diamonds and redstone stuff, right? Here we've got our forestry items. So appetite is something we'd probably pull out of the ground, but that's probably it. So do I want any items going in this chest? Good question. Let me think that one through. And this chest here is going to be your red power items. So those are definitely going to have something. So uh, if that's red power, let's use red. Why not? There we are. I might knock this guy off just for now. I haven't decided if I want items going into this chest. The only thing that's going to be coming down is appetite, and I could simply throw appetite in this chest. 
And then there's really nothing that needs to go in here, at least not right now. I can't think of anything that would be coming out of the ground that I would want to go into this chest. And then what do we got next? Cobble. All right. Well, I didn't want to break that guy. Uh, cobble can be, why not, yellow. There we go. And the dirt, sandstone, gravel stuff, we'll make that... Well, let's go with this light bluish color. It's more of a teal, I guess. And then finally, we've got all this miscellaneous junk. Um, I'm not sure if I want items going into this chest either. So I'm going to knock this off for now. I might want another chest, maybe just temporarily, to store items that I don't expect to be coming out of the ground. So I pretty much want to have something that I don't account for going somewhere. For now, let's go with this chest. We might move this later, and I'll make that white. Good to go. So now we've got all these color-coded chests. Let's go ahead and assign our machine right here, the sorting machine, to how it's going to work. Now we don't have to worry about dark blue, because dark blue is going to come through my retriever. But light blue is going to be coal, diamond, redstone. And all I have to do is go over here and find light blue. Well, I think that's it. That matches that color. No, this is more of the, the other blue. And you right click to go backwards and left click to go forwards. Yeah, that color matches. And I'm going to put my coal, redstone, and diamond in the sorting machine like so. And I also need glowstone, lapis, appetite, and uranium. And you might be saying to yourself, oh, well, we're probably not going to be mining up glowstone, so that's something we don't have to worry too much about. Uh, lapis we will be mining. And the uranium, we don't have room for this guy right here. So we're going to have to get another line here with the blue. And I might do something about this. We'll see. But that looks good for now. Then we can head over to our red chest. And that, we know... I'll put this guy back away. Our red chest is going to be nickelite, ruby, sapphire, emerald, and tungsten. I'm pretty sure that's everything that I might be mining out of the ground that would want to go in that chest. So that is the red chest for the red power stuff. So let's go find the color red in here. There it is. And I'll put, yeah, stuff got funky with my clicking. So tungsten is already in there. Nicolite, sapphire, and ruby. Good, looking good so far. Okay, let's craft ourselves a sandstone. And so we've got sand, sandstone, gravel, and dirt. Want to go in this light blue area. So let's see, there it is. Sand, sandstone, gravel, and dirt. Perfect. And cobblestone is going to go, what yellow? Yellow, right? Yeah, yellow. Yellow is the color I went with that guy. So there we go, yellow. And then all we need to do is assign this white line here. So how do we do that? Well, remember I told you there's multiple different modes with this sorting machine. Um, and the way these guys all work is different depending on what the sorting machine is connected to, be it a chest or in line in the middle of a tubing system like it is now. And I'm going to use this mode here at the end. And this mode here at the end says basically if you don't know what to do with an item, basically the item is not in this list of items right here, go ahead and sound it down a certain color. And I'm going to say white. Cool. So any items that it doesn't know what to do with are going to go down the white path. Now we just need some ores for the green path. So maybe I should run downstairs real quick and go find some ores of each different kind to go down this green path. That's going to be silver, copper, tin, iron, and gold. And you can see me mining down here on the lookout for some gold. There should be some coming up at some point here. Just found 2048 on the uh, divining rod, which is pretty awesome. Just making sure I have enough inventory to carry all this junk. I've already found pretty much everything I wanted. I found some gold, some silver, some tin, some iron, even got some tungsten, dirt, whatever else. And uh, I'm just now on the lookout for some copper. There's usually a lot a little bit higher up. So I'm going to go dig around a little bit higher up in the ground and hopefully find some copper. And then we can put our system to the test. All right, found some copper. There we go. Let's uh, get out of here. You can see I left myself a portal hanging out inside this room. Let's put all our junk in this chest. And there's one piece I haven't set up just yet, but I'm basically going to throw all the junk in here and hopefully it'll find its way to where it belongs. 
That should be good for now. I'm also going to clean up my inventory and be right back. I decided I want another project table real quick, just because I like them. And this project table's goal is going to basically be to make um, the different circuits from Red Power. So that's chest on the bottom, crafting table on top. Let's just do that. And then I need some wood and some smooth stone along the top. Get myself another project table. I like these guys, they're pretty handy. Let's put this guy right here like so. I don't know if that's a good spot for it, maybe not. Sure, why not? And I'm gonna go cook up a bunch of those red power wafer things. So uh, where's my induction furnace? I'm gonna just throw this stuff in there. Get myself a bunch of stone wafers. Very nice. And I'm gonna need a little bit more smooth stone. See how nice it is when the induction furnace cooks two things at once? Gotta love it. Alright, stone wafers I've got enough. Make sure I have some uh, redstone wiring too, and maybe even some sticks. Getting low on wood again. So let's see, I'm gonna need some more of you guys. Okay, so what I want to do is craft myself a timer. I'm gonna need a few of these guys. Um, at least one, but maybe two. So, I'm going to need three stone wires. Let's go with six of those stone wires and four of these stone anodes. That should be good. And then I'm going to need uh, a couple sticks. trying to do all this right. And then uh, need to make two pointers and two cathodes, right? So let's go like this. One, two cathodes, and one, two pointers. There we go. And now I should be able to craft this guy as shown. One here, one here, three along the top, this here. So I made myself two timers. That'll be good. All right. So uh, there's a couple more small components here that I need to get in place before I can turn on the system. First of all, I need uh, a timer to run this filter. Basically, this filter, when it receives a redstone signal, will pull one stack of items out of this chest. And as you can see, there's a bunch of items in the chest to get pulled out. So uh, I need a timer set up right here to start pulling them. Um, then I'm also going to need to run some power, some blutricity power, over to these retrievers. Why don't I run those guys now? Let's see, I should have my red power exchange stuff. Should have some blue alloy wire in here. Let's go find that battery, or at least the cabling that I made earlier. I had some. It's around here. Let's go outside and dig around in the dirt. So I can just run this guy straight down here. I don't even need this piece, or do I? Yeah, I kind of do. All right, I'll leave that as is. But I can run this straight along here and inside to my house. And then let's get out of here. Cover this back up with dirt so it looks nice again. There we go. And now I need to run this blue trick cabling right over here. And remember, it runs along the walls rather well. So let's run it just like so. I could run this guy straight up like this. And this thing should start getting powered. You can see the power bar going up. It's moving pretty quick because it's connected to that battery box that's outside. And remember that battery box is probably pretty full right now. Oh yeah, look at that. This is the internal storage of the battery box. It's pretty much full, only being drained by the retriever that's hooked up to it right now. So there we go, nice and fully powered. And I can do the same thing with this retriever. Let's do this one right, mm, I don't know, here. That might be good. And I'm doing this this way for a little bit of a reason. And yeah, I see there's appetite there, don't worry. Let's put this guy right here, and this going into here should start powering it up. Perfect. So my retrievers now have power, but they also need redstone ticks. Every 
you know, a couple seconds, they should start pulling items out of the induction furnace. So let's make it a two second timer. And since these two things are right next to each other like this, I can use one timer and some redstone wiring. So I might want to move this guy a little bit. Yeah, let's probably consider moving this. I know, I just laid it down a minute ago, but oh well. It's my prerogative. Change my mind a little bit. And then, uh, let's see, how do I want to run this cabling a little bit different? All right, so let's lay down our timer first here. I'm going to place it there. I'm going to leave it at the two-second pulse interval. I think that should be good. I can always change that up a little bit. And then I'll run my redstone thing like that. So then you'll see it's going to pulse this machine every two seconds. And this machine every two seconds will pull out whatever's sitting inside those macerators. And I can do the same thing right over here. Uh, just because of the way this timer works, I can run my cable straight up the wall to that. And I had just enough cabling for it. Perfect. Now let's figure out how I want to run my cabling. Let's just run some, uh, a little bit of a cover here. That looks pretty good. How exactly do I want to do this? This should work. I just want to make sure it looks good even though it's going to be under the flooring. So give me a second to think about exactly how I want to lay this out. All right, I decided to rewire the system. I'm going to need a little bit more of that wiring. One more piece required me to go cook some more up. So in the future, I'll have a lot more of this red wiring stuff. But uh, for now, we're in good shape. So red alloy wire, good to go. I'm going to run it like so. So you can see it's all coming out the front here. It's the same wire that's getting pulsed. And then if I put this cabling right here like that, it'll repulse this retriever as well. And then I can run my Bluetricity wiring probably just like this. There we go. Now that guy's getting power. Beautiful, isn't it? I think it looks nice. All right, let's give it a test, shall we? Now don't forget we need to change this thing here to green. So it's the darker green, it's not light green, lime green, or whatever it is. There it is, dark green. And let's get one of each of these ores. One, two, three, four, five ores can go into the green line. And because I was smart this time doing my Let's Play series, I did turn off the uh, copper and tin generation of other ore types, so I only need one, cape, one column here to run to the green line. So let's give this guy a shot. I'm going to grab a couple things. I want to grab a few diamonds and... Uh, couple miscellaneous pieces of junk here just so I can test all the different items going from spot to spot and we'll make sure that everything's running exactly the way we would want it to. So uh, we'll leave this blue alloy ingot in there for now. I'll put away this silver piece. I really only need one of these but I also want to grab an emerald and uh, I've got some cobble in there already I think and some dirt so that should be good. Yeah looking good to me throw this in there and that. Why not? All right. One more thing I want to add to this system. Do I have in here a stick? I want to add a lever that's going to be an on-off switch for my timer. So all I got to do is, where's my screwdriver? Did I put it away already? Why do I always put my screwdriver away when I'm not done with it? So I'll put this guy here and apply the redstone signal. There we go. All right, my first item got pulsed through, and that was the tin. And as you can see, the tin's going along the green path and up into my macerator, where it's going to get macerated pretty quickly because there's five overclocker upgrades. And every two seconds, the tin dust is going to get pulled out of my retriever and sent through the back along the orange path. And you can see it has an orange border, so it's going to be cooked. And it's going to be cooked straight up. It looks like I got some blue alloy wires in there by mistake somehow. And then they're sent down. The bars are sent down and given the blue painting and sent up into the blue pipe. Ta-da! Nice. So it looks like it was working as intended. Let's turn this filter on to full blast. I'm going to bring it down to every 0.5 seconds. Should be good. There we go. So you can see items going to all different directions. Uh, they're all going to get sorted where they belong, but pay close attention to this guy. Gold is going in there, copper is going to go in there, and now the iron and stuff isn't really sure where to go. So where is it going? It shouldn't be going anywhere in particular. 
Ah, it's going to go back up that path, huh? Interesting. So it's just going to bounce around inside the pipes, trying to figure out where to go. I guess the retriever, the back of the retriever, is a valid inventory. I didn't think it would be. But there goes the copper and gold heading where they belong. Good. And now my silver ore is getting macerated as well. All right. Looking like this system's doing exactly what I want it to do. It's going to require a little bit more maintenance and a little bit more paying attention, but I think this is a pretty good wrapping up point. This episode has run long enough as it is. So this has been episode 9 of Direwolf 20's Let's Play series. Hope you guys enjoyed checking it out. Uh, catch me next time where I'll have some more probably finishing touches on this system just to clean up this room and make it look nice, and then we'll get on to some more different builds. Now that I've got a sorting system in place, it's probably time for me to get some build craft stuff going on and get ready to make a quarry. Take it easy, everyone.